headphones. <clears throat> so uh, I think at the last maybe five No Time to Wait, I gave this presentation at the beginning of the last day. Um, and this is just to go over like how No Time to Wait happens, how we make this conference, and to provide thank yous and I don't know, just so we get the right amount of support from people, we want you to know how, how we do this um, and welcome your advice on how to do this in the future. <clears throat> so I think I just use the same slide every year because in general, um, the way to get this conference to happen is a mix of the contribution of time, money, and, and love. Uh, we definitely need all of these in order to pull off this uh, event. <clears throat> so I wanted to go back and show our budgets for the last couple of years. So no time to wait five. Uh, we ended up getting a, a sponsorship from, from these various institutions. Initially, um, the no time to wait conference was funded by the Performa project exclusively. In, in that we had uh, 5,000 euro that was supposed to be used to develop a public workshop and we would just use that to run the first two iterations of the conference. Uh, once that project ended, we didn't have access to that funding source anymore, but um, there was enough encouragement and support from the community um, that we were able to uh, work with these sponsors to support the continuation of the, the conference. So um, we had this wonderful list of sponsors supporting us for No Time to Wait 5, <clears throat> which was, I think, in 2021 during the Omicron outbreak. So if you might remember what happened, um, that entire conference went online, and that's when we moved to Gather Town, um, which in a lot of ways reduced our expenses because we had raised all this money, and a lot of our um, budget goes to running a social dinner like last night and travel grants, which weren't so relevant when we were uh, having to move fully online. So um, because of that, we had like a large outstanding budget from No Time to Wait 5, this uh, 4,400 euro that we were able to carry over to the next one. <clears throat> so next, No Time to Wait 6 was in The Hague last year. Uh, we get, <clears throat> sorry for my voice, we got a little bit of additional funding from these sources for a total of uh, 7,100. <clears throat> and then finally for No Time to Wait 7, this is our list of um, financial sponsors. Um, I have the DPC listed in here, but it's a bit of an indirect sponsor. They, the way they contributed to No Time to Wait was in travel grants, but they would distribute the travel grant directly to the recipient. Um, we have these other sources, uh, we collected 6,900, added to the 2,000 euro we had from last year, and had a total of 8,900 euro to uh, run this conference. So this is how we spend our money. Um, we spent 3,000 euro on travel grants, which I think was substantially more than we did before. The highest ever. Um, so uh, congrats to the folks that we were able to help support in getting here. Um, you know, we think obviously like in attending a conference, like when you consider the total costs of all the participants involved, like our culminative travel is a substantial one. Like when, oh, you're so kind to me. I'll add this to my other glass of water over here. <laughs> Um, so, so travel grants help support bringing more voices and more participation to the conference. Um, the printing is just for the program you see, um, the signature sheets, um, I don't know, a couple of the other signage, and then we have our badges. For organizer travel and lodging, there's uh, four people in the organizing committee, and we cover our own travel and our flights in our hotel. And then last night, the dinner initially was supposed to be 1,800 euro, but I think we drank a little more than we expected to, so it was 1,900 euro. <clears throat> so um, we had raised 8,900 and spent 7,900. So this is what it looks like uh, going forward for us. Um, we have 1,000 euro to bring into next year, and uh, we still love our sponsors so much, so like have to sort of go about fundraising for next year. I don't know, Alison, did you want to share comments for next year in particular? Or? Do it later? Yeah. <clears throat> um, might be worthwhile doing it now. Oh, yes. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for coming this morning. Yeah, so we are really uh, dependent on you, not only as um, contributors to the community in terms of participating to documentation writing, just contributing, just being involved, sharing your practices and knowledges, but we're also kind of dependent on you supporting um, No Time to Wait in this community, financially speaking, with your dollars, euros, yens, 
um, corners, any 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 monetary. Uh, so we uh, would, I'm going to make an honest and open appeal if you can speak to your organizations, to your leadership about supporting No Time to Wait, please do so. It doesn't have to be a, a big amount. Um, 100 years, 500 years go a really, really long way. Um, uh, so in order for us to keep this conference open and free and provide you with social events and provide you with... Uh, with with the spaces and and all this wonderful community for coming together, we really are dependent on everybody here, even financially speaking. Um, so again, um, if you can speak to your leadership, if you know of any schemes that we can apply to, please uh, let us know. We've had, I'm going to be very open and transparent again, uh, two of our big uh, sponsors that we're very grateful for can no longer go forward. So there's going to be um, a, a hole in our budget for next year. So talking about next year, um, this is also, an, uh, some of you may have already heard, usually at the end of this conference, we uh, let you know where the next conference is, is going to be. Unfortunately, this year we cannot do that because uh, we had an institution in mind, but that fell through, unfortunately. And so we're also making an, an appeal to you if you could host us next year. Um, please let us know. We can talk about what it means in terms of uh, resources, in-kind resources, but also financial resources. And we're also very, very grateful for uh, for those institutions uh, to host us. We're also happy to to come to these institutions. We believe that it's also good for them that we come to you. We bring the entire community. We bring the knowledge. We bring the fun. Um, so yeah, if, you, if you're interested, I mean, we can talk more about it later. Just come and speak to Dave and I about what it actually, actually means. And there again, we're really, um, yeah, relying on people's generosity. And um, yeah, so thank you so much. And uh, I think that's it for our sponsors. Yeah, and no. <clears throat> so... <clears throat> As I really spoke to the money part about the time part, I wanted to thank uh, Media Area for so much of the coordination, administrative support, and time. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, our host uh, institution here obviously provided us this wonderful space, technical support. Um, I should have added, like, they added the catering, so, like, the pumpkin soup, the sandwiches, um, and just so much of their time. It was, like, a, a year of us meeting and planning behind the scenes. And then obviously, like we have our organiza organizers, our speakers, and our volunteers offering us so much time. And then all of us are offering, you know, tweets, encouragement to one another, notes, um, and then just love from the community. So, like, all these are pretty essential uses of time to support the conference. Uh, and this is Alexander spoke to a little bit. Um, I don't know if we have a few more minutes, but like Alexander and I could speak to any questions about how this conference runs, if you like. Um, you're the stage corner, so you got to call on yourself. <laughs> like, <laughs> can you say a bit more about how an institution becomes a sponsor? Um, well, you can you can express your interest with us, and then we can sort of informally uh, discuss it. We have a but how we also have a Google a, a Google questionnaire, I guess, where very basic first questions or are are laid out so that the host institution understands what it is that we are expecting, <laughs> Sorry, we're um, what it is that we are expecting. Um, so if I can just summarize, it's basically, uh, we would need a room. Uh, our workshop day is getting bigger, so we would also, uh, I think, add having breakout rooms, having other, other rooms we could um, use a technical setup. I mean, we come with our live streaming. However, if we have technical assistance or um, equipment within that institution that'd be that'd be great, and then of course it's the uh, lunches and the and the and the coffee breaks that is being that is that is kind of the 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 resources we would you know ask for from the host institution. The social dinner is purely run by sponsorship, so we always uh, try to find sponsors for the social dinner, particularly uh, as well as the the travel grants. Same with the travel grants. Travel grants are very open. So um, each institution can decide if they go to very specific people, if it's very general, if they're students or not. Um, and then we assign them also on a, on, a, on, on a different basis. So I think that's, yeah, so come speak to us. We, can, we, we, sh we will share the Google Drive link if you want to 
have a look at what it means to host, and then we can go into, into deeper conversation. You could also reach out to other hosts to gauge what their involvement was. I think that also helps. Some are here. Yeah. Some are here. Are there any other questions for Alessandra and Dave before we move on? Yes, Erwin. When you're looking for hosts, does it have to be a European one? No, it doesn't have to be a European one, but um, just so that because of, I mean, you've seen our budgets, they're not big. Um, and we love everybody and we love every country. Um, you know, but um, we are also very mindful about what it means to travel to certain places, certain countries. So not every city is affordable, not every city is easily reachable. So if we organize a conference, I don't know, I'm gonna say Gestadt in Switzerland, um, it, there, it's a different budget than if we say, oh, we're going to, uh, to I don't know, Bologna in Italy. Those are different. Um, so the Bologna in Italy, I know, I've been thinking about how to get the university involved there. Um, the point is, is that we're very, very mindful. We can go to any country, but it would also involve us then doing more uh, outreach, more getting more, sponsor, more sponsorship, but we are happy to come to you wherever you are. Um, depending on where you are, we just need to raise way more funds because we want to make it accessible. We want to increase the travel grants in that case. And we want to be able to give you a fun social dinner where you can have maybe three drinks next time, everybody. <laughs> it's been that is a good idea to propose the, to propose the cheap, easy, reachable country. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're very mindful because it helps us as well. You know, if our costs are low for traveling, then it benefits all of you too. <laughs>